Um, ben, I don't know if you're familiar with my channel or seen any previous videos. Have you seen any? Uh, I have not, but people have told me you're were, you were being a dick to me. So my no, right? See, you know, this is what I wanted. <laughs> this is what I wanted to clear up. This is what I wanted to say. All right, welcome back to the Ruin Wheels podcast, and today we have a very special guest, decorated champion in multiple disciplines of yes. fighting, fighting on yes. April the seventeenth against Jake Paul. It is none other than Ben Askren. What's up, guys? How you doing? Good, man. Good, good, good. We're excited for this fight, you know? Yeah, I'm ready for your hardest questions. <laughs> no, I <laughs> no, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Um, we know the uh, press conference was recent. We're going to get into that and how you felt and dealing with that situation. But how is training going? How is camp actually going for you right now? Uh, it, it's really good. I mean, I've never done a boxing camp before, so I don't really have a lot to compare it to. Um, but everything seems to be going really well. You know, it's a really interesting because in, uh, it's been what, 11 years since I've actually trained for wrestling and, you know, wrestling, you yeah. can focus on a really specific skill set. When you're in mixed martial arts, it's like, Hey, you're doing this one day a week and this one day a week and this one day a week. And so mm -hmm. you have all these different things that you're thinking about all at one time. And it, it you know, makes it more difficult. And now with boxing, it's just like, I just got a box every, every single day. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm having fun with it and everything's going well. And uh, have you brought in any um, notable sparring partners or anybody um, with high level boxing experience known to the world to help you along with your journey so far? Yeah. So I, w I went to Freddie Roaches for a week and that was awesome. And obviously he has a whole bunch of guys who are really, really high level there. And then I brought in this guy, um, Cornelius Bundridge, who is a world champion. Okay, man. Yeah. Um, he's actually came over for two weeks now, so he came really early. He came in the middle, and then actually, I'm training with him again this week. He's coming in. Nice, that's nice. nice. So it's good because also, um, you know, we have I have 12 weeks, and um, you know, I think a lot of boxers are annoyed with Jake Paul because he says, like, I'm a boxer and I'm gonna become good. It's like, meh maybe at some point we'll see, but you're not there yet. And it's like, I'm mm -hmm. not under the illusion that I'm a good boxer. I have 12 <laughs> weeks to figure out how to beat up Jake Paul. So it's like, yeah, let, yeah. let's deal with the skill set that I already have from mixed martial arts and just make some small tweaks and turns and, and really focus on one opponent. Am I ever going to box again after this? Uh, probably not. I mean, there's a chance. I, I just don't think it's all that likely. And that's the thing. There's a misconception thinking that you've never done striking before. People just assume that you're so, just a pure wrestler when you've been in the mixed martial arts game. And you know what the funny thing is? So the funny thing was, was um, before the press conference, he said to you, this is the fight game. Like you haven't been in it for X amount <laughs> yeah, of years. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so a picture of like some of the scary ass dudes, you know, like three of them, and then a picture of him at the press conference and be like, which one of these ones doesn't seem like the other? Um, yeah, true. I mean, in mixed martial arts, uh, you know, I've been in there, you go four ounce gloves, they can knee you, they can elbow you, they can choke you, mm -hmm. they can kick you. Mm -hmm. A lot of dangers, a lot of dangers. So it's very dangerous and there's a lot of, a lot of weapons to worry about. Um, and with boxing, it's, it's obviously only two weapons, you know, two hands. Mm -hmm. And, but you have to be much better at it because again, people are, have been, you know, most boxers, not, not Jake Paul, of course, yeah. have been doing this for a very, very long time. It's the same way I feel about wrestling. Like, Wrestlers are better at wrestling than mixed martial arts are at mixed martial arts because it's just such a narrow skill set. And in order to get to the top of that, you have to be really, 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 really good at it. Yeah, elite. Yep. Mm. It's true. No, very true. Um, ben, I don't know if you're familiar with my channel or seen any previous videos. Have you seen any? Uh, I have not, but people have told me you were, you were being a dick to me. So my no, right? See, you know, this is what I wanted. <laughs> this is what I wanted to clear up. This is what I wanted to say, right? As a as a fellow fighter, everyone is entitled to their opinion. At, at of course, no point have I have I disrespected you, and I always credit you for what you have achieved. And I know how hard it is to achieve the highest level of any combat sport. So I always give you your respect. But when it comes to the boxing side of things, I from what I've seen, I don't know if you're 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 bluffing with us or if you're playing with us but from what i've seen and what i've seen from jake i have favored jake to win this fight now that is just my opinion i can't choose pick and choose the outcome of things but that is just my personal view uh what makes you so confident that you will prove people like myself wrong yeah uh so i think there's a couple things there so i think uh well first of all um like leon said i did fight in a striking you know art mixed martial arts mm -hmm. you can hit kick elbow whatever um 
but I wasn't actually ever trying to strike anyone, right? All I was trying to do was get okay. through a couple punches or kicks, get close enough, take them down, then beat them up on the ground, mm -hmm. which, you know, I was undefeated for a decade, so it worked relatively well. Um, mm -hmm. And now when I went to boxing, uh, you know, the, especially the first couple weeks, it felt so strange because normally it was like throw one punch or two punches and then, you know, collar tie them or overhook and or, then you know, attack the legs, right. something like that. And so, like, even just, like, moving the right way felt really really weird um so yeah i mean obviously i've learned a lot i've been at this i think nine weeks now um so it, it is despite the fact that i've had people striking at me it is way different um now on the other end uh you know with jake paul he he very likely has better boxing skills than me. There, there is no okay. doubt about that. Okay. Okay. So you would agree. You would agree with that. You wouldn't. I would agree with that. that. That's fine. But so yeah. when I think about anything, and this is whether it's wrestling, uh, mixed martial arts, jujitsu, what pick a thing. There is both the art that you need to be skillful at, right? So boxing. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. there's also the the part of being a competitor, right? And that yes. most people neglect that that's a skill, but that is in fact mm -hmm. a skill. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't Very really true. know. A, tremendous amount about your amateur career but i always say um i mean this is wrestling jujitsu pick a pick a martial yeah. art it's one person versus another person you have to figure out how to get your hand raised and at some point in your career there's been something that didn't go all that well and you had to think shit this isn't going too well i don't like this how do i freaking figure this thing out and get my hand raised and you get it tough right yeah, yeah very you know, true very, very true. true it's true and so the one you know the, the one fight that is really notable that um I bring up because you can see the guy's first attempt at it and you guys can see the sec guy's second attempt is Conor yeah. McGregor. So right. the first time Conor McGregor expected to kick Nate Diaz's ass. And when Nate Diaz was still standing there after about seven minutes, Conor was like, oh shit, what do I do? I'm really tired. And he ended up getting choked out about a minute or two later. The second time he got there against Nate Diaz, you could see in the second round in early third, he was getting really tired. And he yeah. thought over my dead body, this is not going to happen again. I will keep fighting. And that's a point every fighter has to get to in their career mm. to learn how to get past it. I, I, you know, that's a very, very valid point. And um, it does make all, of, all the difference. And I guess, you yeah. know. Have you had that point in your career? I have. I have. I have. I had a, quite an extensive amateur background, you know, international, you know, tournaments and, and everything. And there was a lot of times where it didn't boil down to skill anymore. It boiled down to pure heart and determination and are you going home as a winner or a loser? And I understand that is the angle that you're coming from. And it makes sense as to why you have supreme confidence going into this fight, especially comparing him to your last um, or your previous opponents that you've had throughout your career. What do you think is Jake Paul's biggest threat? What, what, is, what is something that you... With all respect to him as your opponent, what do you think is his biggest threat? So I, I think he probably does have some relatively good boxing skill. Um, at the same time, I have I've heard people publicly say, and I've also heard people privately say that you know his coaches will bring someone in and, and say, "Hey, don't try to kick his ass." You know, I believe don't, that. Don't fight him as hard <laughs> as you can fight him, um, and. You know, that that always leads to kind of negative consequences because you get a false sense of reality and a false sense of, of who you are and what you're about. So um, you think he's protected, protected within, within his, his own, own camp? camp. Between, I, I've seen a few people say that publicly. Um, okay, I can't okay. cite the guy right now, but there was a mixed martial artist and he said, um, you know, they brought me in and they told me, I think to only jab him or, or don't go super hard. I don't recall exactly what he said, but... Right, right. Yeah. So I think he's he's probably a good boxer, but again... Um, my my biggest weapon would be just to make it a fight, get in there and make it dirty. If I'm trying to do pretty boxing yeah. against him, mm -hmm. yeah, it's probably, it's yeah. probably not going to go all that well for me. And you know, I I've said this also. If if he was really good, I mean, I sparred this one guy at Freddy's who he fought for world title. I have no chance, right? I, yeah. I, I'm just I'm just going to get fucked up. Um, and that's that's what it comes down to, right? If I'm fighting someone like that, um, he's experienced. Yeah. Yeah. he's experienced. He's a world champ. Mm -hmm. He's really high level. I don't think Jake is that. I don't think no, he's no, he's not by any means. No, no way. I don't, I don't feel. I feel like he gets a lot of credit because of the industry he's come from. It's not hard to look like a tough guy or to look like someone who, you know, that that's a fact. That that is, and even as a legitimate fighter myself, people might take me lightly because I'm associated with the YouTube demographic. So I I I can understand 
um, how people look at him that way. But um, I just think personally, it's going to be a fight from round three. I think if it gets to round three and beyond, that's where the scrap begins and that's where the tide can turn. Would you agree with, with, with that? Yeah, I, I, I would, no, I would say, yeah, I, I would think his best opportunities are rounds one and two. Um, and, and, you know, not only that, but I am a, a notoriously slow starter. I kind of always have been, you know, from mm-hmm. my early days in wrestling. It was something I really had to work on. I have significantly more slow twitch muscle fibers than I do fast twitch muscle fibers. <laughs> and so, you know, my ability in wrestling was just get someone tired and I can go hard as shit. You know, a college wrestling match is seven minutes. Mm-hmm. I can go hard as shit for seven minutes. So by the end of the seven minutes, the other guy's completely exhausted. Um, and that's kind of been, you know, in wrestling was one of my biggest weapons. Obviously, mm-hmm. in mixed martial arts, it's, it's a little more challenging uh, because there are so many weapons to hurt you with. You have to be kind of ready yeah. to jump in boxing. Um, while there's not as many weapons, obviously, there's still the early danger. So I, you know, I'm going to need to keep my defense tight and get on the inside and, and make it a tough fight for him. Yeah, that's what, that's what we, that's what we want to see. I want to see you rough him up. That's, that's what we need to see. <laughs> rough, rough him up. up. Rough, rough him up. up. <laughs> Leo's been, Leo's, been sure. Leo's been waiting for He's this. Leo's been waiting for this. He's annoying, so. man. He just reminds no. me of Johnny Bravo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, it's so. Uh, I, I, I want to say this in the press conference, but that dipshit wouldn't stop interrupting me. Um, mm. And I, listen, you guys aren't from America. I don't know what team sport, what team sports do you guys have? Is, say you're a kid, you're a fifth grader. What like Soccer, like football. So yeah, soccer, yeah. we see you. Yeah. Um, so in, in America, we have baseball and then uh, football with, you know, the pigskin. Yeah. yeah. And there's, you know, yeah quarterback is the like the premier position and then mm-hmm. in baseball it's pitcher and i think everyone can relate to not liking jake paul because when we were kids there's always that kid that was the pitcher the quarterback and you're like why the f is that kid the quarterback or the pitcher they suck and the answer is because their dad's really rich and you know mm-hmm. he bought jerseys or he pays for travel or something to that effect so, yeah, and everybody know. else on the field knows they probably shouldn't be in that position and yeah. then at some point they get exposed for what they are Right? Maybe mm-hmm. not the first game, maybe not the second game, but at some point they get exposed to what they are. Jake Paul is that kid. Now, it just so yeah. happens that the currency is the amount of people that will watch him because of his following. It's not his dad giving money. But that's yeah. why all the other fighters can't stand him. And he's too stupid, or he's acting, one of the two, <laughs> to realize <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, right? I mean, if, yeah. if I said, I'm a fucking good boxer, that's why I'm the main event of this really big card. You guys would be like, you're out of your goddamn yeah, mind. Yeah, you, yeah, you're not being truthful. And, and and that's the thing, Ben. That's why I appreciate you coming on to the show because I've always spoken from an uh, angle of truth, not to belittle or insult anybody. And the fact that, you know, as as a fellow fighter, you can respect that is it, it means a lot. Um, You have some really good names on your record, as we know, through winning multiple championships. Um, But will this be one of the most satisfying victories for you even though the well, opponent yeah, is I don't know. the least I don't know skilled it will be well, i mean because how you feel after this win you know with okay. and i don't know if you you i'm sure you can relate it at some level and because even when i when i was younger right i've come up in wrestling there's these things i aspire to be and so mm-hmm. like when i won my first state title it was like yes mm-hmm. i've been trying to do this for two years you know and then when i went yeah. to national title i was like yes make the olympic team and then it's like okay i'm gonna go into mixed martial arts and then, you know, you are essentially validated by winning a belt, right? And they said, you're the champion. You did this thing well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it feels so good because you've put all this work yeah. into it in your whole life, you know? And this boxing thing, I mean, no offense, but I, I boxed for 12 weeks, right? I th- I, well, <laughs> by the time I get the fight day, I'll box for 12 weeks. I think that's all it's going to take me to beat up Jake Paul. But it's not <laughs> like I put my life into it. It's not like I put 10 years, right? I, I put 10 years a really hard work into making the Olympic team. Um, right, yeah. And so just the, the, right. the, what comes with that, I think emotionally is probably a little bit different. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, Ben, how you find in the, the, the YouTube crowd? Um, oh, go on, go on. Well, obviously the engagement is different now. It's, it's so, so yeah, different. I mean, I don't really read comments that much or very, very minimally. <laughs> um, so it doesn't really affect me all that much. You know, I think that's kind of, healthy for um healthy for your mind is to not read too much into what a lot of other people are saying yeah, yeah. That's true. Yep. no i agree i agree I, I, across my socials i hardly follow people and like i'm really not in 
tune with what's going on. Even the way this interview came about, I just put it out there that I would like to interview you. And my editor, you told me that you replied. I didn't realize you had replied. So that's kind of how <laughs> out of touch I am with staying um, on, on the socials. But um, let's talk about the press conference. Very recently happened, a lot of eyes, um, a lot of people believe you handled the press conference best you could and made him look extremely childish and got the upper hand from it. Talk to us. How do you feel, Ben? How do you feel? I feel like you've done a great job. I feel like it definitely gave everyone SPF. more confidence Perfect, in yeah. you than before. I feel like you gained a lot of followers and a lot of people in favor of you from the press conference. Talk us through it. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, uh, so like I said, there was more that I wanted to say, but this dude just wouldn't shut up. So I felt like <laughs> it's going to be almost impossible for me to get like a full thought out there because he's mm -hmm. just like um, annoying. And But yeah. you know what is really crazy? And, I, and maybe this is me, me being like an older guy and speaking. It's like he's still so incredibly insecure. And, you know, he is famous. Mm -hmm. He does to my knowledge, have a lot of money. I can't confirm that or yeah. deny that for sure, but yeah. it appears that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's still so insecure with himself. I mean, just like, I, I don't know where you are in your birth order. Um, I'm the older brother. I whoop my little brother's ass all the time. Every older brother whoops their little brother's ass. Now, sometimes <laughs> yes. little brother, I'm the oldest. You know, yeah, the oldest. You know what I'm talking about, right? You whooped your little yeah, brother's it's ass. True. It's true. It's true. <laughs> And like the fact that he couldn't say, yeah, my older brother whooped my ass. Like yeah, the fact yeah. that he got so mad. Listen, that's a part of growing up. If you're the big brother, you should the whooping. And sometimes the yeah. little brother gets bigger than you, right? And then it yeah. maybe tides turn when you're a little older. But when yeah. you're younger, it's not the case. And the fact that he couldn't like admit to that, it just shows a really, really high level of insecurity. Yeah, no, I think I noticed that. I noticed that, when, and I felt it was very—it was a subtle tactic from you, but very effective for you to reference him as Logan's little brother. And uh, I think that was very smart because you know, you you know, you had a feeling of what it would do, and it's not such an in-your-face statement, but it triggered such a reaction. So smart, yeah, smart from your side. But just um, the fact he just like so. Um... And, you know, I didn't follow the polls at all before this fight got announced. Now, you know, mm -hmm. I don't follow him a lot, but mm -hmm. looking into it, the, the, in the level of insecurity from someone who is, you know, rich and famous, um, it, it's kind of ridiculous. He should learn to brush off those those comments on social media a little bit more. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I had a lot more material, but, uh, you know, again, he wouldn't shut up. So I didn't really get to get into it too deeply. Um, how did you feel about him saying you choked at the Olympics and you choked in the UFC and his constant reference to Masvidal and obviously to you, I know it's probably just falling on deaf ears, but how, what, what was going through your mind at the time? What, what happened? What um, was you yeah, it's just, it, it's probably the way he thinks about it. And, but he, again, he's really immature and insecure. Um, you know, one of the statements uh, I use a lot when I'm when I'm thinking about this type of stuff, and mm -hmm. this this could be athletic competitions, this could be a lot of other things in life. You never want to tie your ego to the outcome. Um, right. And again, it could be business, it could be relationships, it could be because when you tie your ego to the outcome, you can get screwed um, yeah. because some things aren't going to turn out the way you. I think that's a gem. I think that's a gem you just dropped there on the. That, that's very true. Show. Sick. Yeah. Sick. I yeah. think that's a gem. Um, yeah. Every every conversation that we have with someone, something stays with you. I think that is one that's going to stay with mm -hmm. us from today. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, um, you know, like I, I reference to my, I coach kids at my wrestling academy. My brother, I own five of them. And I love coaching. And I, I always say, like, kids get a lot of built up that, oh, if I, if I win state, something's going to happen. If I, oh, if I lose, this is going to happen. And it's like, don't, don't tie your ego to the outcome. You're the same guy. I always say, listen, July 5th, you know, mm -hmm. if I win July 6th, I'm fighting for the world title next. I got I got knocked out in the most embarrassing fashion probably anyone ever has in, in mixed martial arts. I'm the same guy July 7th. I am not a different person, right? Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. so, listen, you just have to uh, respect yourself for who you are and what you do. And you can't think that something crazy is going to happen because of one positive or negative outcome. Yeah, it's true. it's true and it's hard to actually maintain that level of thought so i think that says something already about mm -hmm. the mental strength that you're bringing into this fight um uh, well, that, I mean, that actually it? helps a lot of people i don't know um I, I did i do this segment called mental monday on some of my social media and sometimes it's my academy social media 
and literally, literally the number one question I've been doing it for like five years. The number one asked question by far, by a very long ways, is something to the effect of, "Hey, my kid wrestles really well, and they get to that mm -hmm. big match, and they don't they don't perform." And it's, it's almost always because the kid is putting an extra emphasis or they're treating that differently. If I do this, then this will happen. And it's like, no, mm -hmm. you just go out there and compete. And hey, if it goes well, it goes well. If it doesn't, then you go back to the drawing board. Very no. true. Very true. And, and I think true. a lot of people put a pressure on themselves that is not required. It doesn't need to be there. You know, it's just all kind of built up within ourselves. And, um, yeah, you seem like, yeah, that's not going to be a problem for you come fight day. Um, what do you think of Jake's coaching stuff? What do you think of BJ Flores as a coach? What do, you, do you respect him or? Yeah, I, I don't actually know. I don't know all that much about BJ Flores except the fact that he lost four ship world title fights, which is, that's got to be a record. <laughs> oh, man, you came, you came yeah. with the smoke today. You came with some yeah. smoke today. That's true. Uh, but the fair whole enough. fact that, listen, fair enough. I don't know about you. I can't, yeah. I can't, I don't want to speak for you. <laughs> and I'm doing okay in life. I don't know that anyone could pay me enough to be their cheerleader. Ah, that's, that's true. true. That, that was crazy. crazy. That's that's crazy. Crazy. There's pre-planned. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, you can pay me enough. But it's Talking, just the entourage around him. Everything's it, fake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like BJ Flores is genuine, genuine with him as a boxing coach. I think, that personally, as I said, this is my opinion, I think he, he really wants him to do well and possibly through the fact of him not fulfilling in his own successes in his career, this is a way to get another chance to, to leave his stamp and leave a mark within the sport. What do you think, what do you think of that, Lee? You think that, like... Uh, yeah, no, no, I like, agree with that. But the, ch but the cheerleading stuff, like, he's got to allow that, man. <laughs> his age as well, you've got to think of it. His age, like, his age, and then he's rolling with these, these, these people. Like, masculine shit, man. Let's bring back the masculine shit, man. Nice. <laughs> Not the girl band stuff. Yeah, I mean, what the other thing I think about, and I think, I, again, I think through kind of wrestling sometimes, um, sometimes, like, guys who've had a reasonable amount of success in wrestling, they become, like, personal coaches or, okay. um, or a businessman brings them in and says, you coach these kids, you know, type of thing, versus mm -hmm. someone who built their own thing, you know? Um, and generally, those people who are brought in or who are given a position with, you know, a sing singular entity... Um, they didn't build that up themselves, right? BJ Flores didn't create this great team, right? He is getting paid. I, I don't know what his relationship with Jake was initially, but somehow yeah. Jake decided to pay him. Um, so it's mm -hmm. not like he built up this incredible stable of fighters mm -hmm. and now he's unleashing them and we're seeing his coaching skills. He's right. been paid by one person, to my understanding, to coach him. And, you know, yeah, Jake's got two wins against guys who aren't fighters. Um, and, even if he were to beat me, I don't think that still makes him a good boxer, right? If he beat me, but yeah. Yeah. and maybe yeah. a little bit yeah. better than beating Nate Robinson, or a lot better. But um, it's not like he's going to go be a high-level boxer still. Right. I yeah. agree with and I, and I can definitely agree with, with that side of mm -hmm. things. Um, as much as the time that he's putting in, I just think it's... It's crazy to think that all the years of work others are putting in, you think you can just make up for it in such a short space of time. I just, I don't, I don't see that. But within the lane that he seems that he's targeting, he may be able to have a, a decent career. Um, it would Logan Paul be of any interest to you if you beat Jake Paul? Yeah, I was on, so I was on Logan's show. It's coming out at mm -hmm. some point, I'm sure. Uh, it was it was a while. It was a couple weeks ago, at least. Um, <laughs> he seemed like a really nice guy compared to Jake, at least. I don't know. That was just my... They're different. They are different. They are very different. Yeah. He was a little more mature. Um, but the one, thing that, the one thing that struck me about Logan was he said something like, you know, we've both been at this for three years, which means we're getting really good. I can't remember. He had referenced three years and that being some kind of significant time period. And I think back to my wrestling career, it's like, shit, I wasn't really good to like... You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that is true. That is very yeah. true. That like, is very true. You could put in three years and be really good. Like I don't think I don't think that's the way that it works. No, 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 no. Because I've, I've been boxing. I've been boxing seventeen years. 
and I compared, yeah, the first three years of boxing, I'm like, wow, I was really nothing. Like, <laughs> like, but probably in year three, in year three, you were comparing yourself to year one, right? And you probably thought, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty fucking good. I'm yeah. good at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is yeah. a fact. Yeah. That is a fact, man. That is a fact. Um, we mentioned about you boxing again after this fight, possibly. But what comes with boxing is the pay. Now, we know... You're getting paid well for this fight. You've said yourself you're, you're getting Pretty a nice yep. payday. Yes, Is it the biggest, am I correct in saying the biggest payday of your career? Biggest payday of your career. Mm -hmm. um, surely you'd want a couple more of those. Surely if it was against the opponent level that you believe you can beat, you yeah. collect so, a few more of these um, checks. I've actually done a really good job investing and um, mm. spending my time building businesses. So... I mean, is the pay nice? Ab absolutely. Is, is it significant to me? Yeah, yeah, good, it is. Um, but do I have to do good, this good. to make money? And the answer is no, I, I really don't. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, it just seemed like a mm -hmm. fun opportunity. And that was why I did it. The pay that comes with it is nice. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I'm not saying I'll say no to another payday. I'm mm -hmm. not, I'm not, there's a potential. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you... Uh, I was retired twice now. So I was retired for the first time, November of 2017 to, I fought again, March of 2019, in October of 2019, I retired again. Yeah. And like the, at first the idea of going into a training camp and training it seriously, it was kind of fun. And now I'm in like week nine of camp maybe, or somewhere around there. And it's like, Oh, this fucking sucks. I got to work out every day. Like oh, I got to. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Oh yes. It's so Ben, what... he's gonna need some time off after this fight because uh, I'm sick of training every day. Yeah, I was gonna say, what does your wife think about you coming out of retirement? Um, she doesn't really care all that much. You know, her first thought was, "Why boxing? You don't box." And I said, "Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't box." But this Jake Paul guy, he's not really that good. I mean, and, and I said, "Well, you never really had an issue with me. I fought, you know, Robbie Lawler, Douglas Lee, yeah. you name it. I fought. They could elbow yeah. me, they could kick me, mm -hmm. they could knee me." They could do any of that shit, which, you know, true, I don't know if you guys get el elbowed, but el getting elbowed hurts like a bitch. It hurts yeah. really bad. Not me, um, not me. Then. Sure, yeah. Getting leg kicked? Get, get, I got leg kicked. I only got leg kicked one time by Douglas Lima. This guy kicks up. My leg hurt for 10 days. <laughs> yeah. It gets like that, yes. Yeah. You know, so it's That's like, true. well, you didn't complain when I was fighting mixed martial arts. So, mm -hmm. you know, doing one, I'm not, I'm not telling you I'm going to box for the next 10 years. I'm just telling you I'm going to do one boxing match. Yeah. So she was but I think, yeah, yeah. You know what I believe? I believe the magnitude of a loss from this fight will probably be bigger than the um the loss any time in your career that you've lost, whether from like yeah. wrestling, MMA, or whatnot. Because the type of crowd that's invested in this are the immature mm -hmm. crowd. So they do all the clowning and whatnot, and the, they keep yeah. bringing back up. Well, listen, make, make I, go viral. Got, I got a million George Masvidal gifts. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it anymore. Actually, him, so both him and his brother, and I think maybe this was in an attempt to give me some anxiety or something. They said, "Well, if you lose this, you're it's over for you." And I'm like, "What? What's over? Well, yeah. I'm retired. I'm retired. True, Am yeah. I not going to be able to run my wrestling academies because I get beat by you? Am I not going to mm. be able to do podcasts? No, I don't really think that's the case. Is my bank account somehow mm. going to go down? No, probably not. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like." You've weighed up what actually changes. Yeah, and it's not much. Not, literally, yeah, nothing not changes for me. Now I'm going to go back. The, whether I win or lose on Saturday, April 17th, Monday, April 19th, I'm going to be coaching in my academies because that's what I enjoy doing. Um, yeah. And so it's like they they want to have some type of illusion, like my life is somehow going to change. Now, if I if I beat him. I will have more opportunities, right? Maybe if I want to box again, I'll get paid a bunch of money to box again, but I don't even know mm -hmm. that I really want to all that bad. Yeah. I might, uh, but I, you know, I, I think the key in life, one of the keys in life is to find something you love doing. I love coaching wrestling. I love That's talking good. about wrestling on my podcast. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm literally living a great life. I get to do exactly what I want every single day. If I, right. Hey, so I decided to box. If I want to go take a yeah. trip to LA for a week, I have other people who can cover my shifts. So I go to LA for a week. If I want to go to Vegas for a week, I went to Vegas last so week. So your life is set. Your life is set. Your life is, your life is good. You're comfy. Yeah. Be. So this yeah. notion that if I lose to him, it's over. I mean, Logan Paul is like, let me, let me be real with you. If you lose, it's over. And I said, what? What's over? <laughs> yeah. 
It's no, true. I guess when you put it like that, and you and you're given the chance to explain and yourself, uh, then yeah, it makes sense to why you can't see why anything would be over. Um, it's just another. It's just literally another fight to you. I mean, for me, it's just like yeah. fun. I mean, I don't. Maybe probably no one probably fought you because you actually box. But like when I was a teenager, um, you know, we were bored on a Friday night. We'd mm -hmm. go to my house and we had big. I think it was like eighteen ounce boxing of some. Hey, let's box each other. Like, let's have yeah. fun. That sounds like a good time. So, you know, that's kind of like how I think about it in those terms. You guys do that? Probably, yeah. probably want to box you though, if you were actually good. Yeah, <laughs> no, we <laughs> fly him out, fly him back out. In the day. Fly back him in out. the day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ben. Uh, so sparring, sparring wise, have you had tough sparring? Like really, really tough sparring. You've been hurt. Have you been hurt? Has someone hit you and you've gone oof? Okay. Um. Yeah. N not. Not all that many times. Um. Mm -hmm. A couple times. You know. I. I was watching some. Sp some really hard sparring at Freddy's, and I actually think it's kind of wild. Um. That you guys go that hard in mixed martial arts. Um. I don't want to say there's understanding, but we're not actually trying to hurt Kill each other. Yeah. In. Um, yeah. In sparring. And I actually saw someone get knocked out. You know, they got hit really hard at Freddy's, kind of rocked Oof. a little bit. And I'm like, shit. And, you know, like, um, and in MMA, you know, we usually sparred one day a week big gloves and one day a week small gloves. And obviously, when you're doing the small gloves, you're not really trying to crack each other. Um, but I guess I was kind of, I don't want to say taken aback, but I was kind of surprised in boxing how hard they spar. I mean, they're yeah, really they, trying to. We do mm. spar quite hard, like, in, in, uh, in boxing and i don't know there's times in it it depends yeah yeah it depends on who the person is it depends you know if there's any underlying emotion there but i have heard um that mma fighters do spar more reserved and save it more for the performance which obviously makes sense it makes perfect sense but have you been taking that approach with the boxing sparring too uh, I've actually so I've sparred more in boxing than I ever did in mixed martial arts because okay, it's like, yeah. you know, for me, it was like, hey, well, I'm going to do this for 12 weeks. So whatever, I'm going to spar a few extra times. I'd spar a few extra times. No big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like, again, with MMA, I knew I was going to be at it for quite a while. I, I ended mm -hmm. up fighting for right around 10 years. I probably wouldn't have guessed it was going to be that long when I started, but that's what it ended up being. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, there is, uh, I think there's almost more concern over the CTE stuff in MMA than there is in boxing. I mean, boxing yeah. kind of seems like people neglect it and just say like, Hey, that's part of the job. Uh, and in MMA, people mm -hmm. seem to be cognizant of that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. See, okay. See, like obviously when you're sparring and you might come to a position where you're unstuck or you come unstuck or whatnot, does your mind sort of drift back to wrestling like as a get out clause? Do you ever find that that type of instinct kick in? Yeah, we're not we're not being sparring like, as of recently or what? Yeah, um, in the first couple of weeks it was that like I said, you know, in MMA it was gr grab and take down and do you know, yeah. that kind of stuff and just where my hands were being placed, I had to really be cognizant mm -hmm. of that because it was yeah, um, just instinct was you know I did it for ten years right, so my instinct was mm -hmm. to go MMA more MMA style and now um, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. definitely quite a few differences between. Um, even just, just in the stand-up, the way you would spar yeah. for mixed martial arts versus the way you would spar for boxing. So I've been trying to make all those changes and they're, they're feeling yeah, the stance, more yeah. comfortable. There's a big difference. Yeah, the stance is a big deal. Yeah. I mean, even difference. like, you know, one thing I noticed in um, with all the sparring is like in MMA, for example, you would want to get underhooks on someone, right? And that's how you can mm -hmm. control them. Um, mm -hmm. And in boxing, I've noticed no one really likes underhooks that much because you get your hands trapped and then you can't hit, right? So they kind of mm -hmm. like coming over a lot more or keeping their hands in tight because then they can start, you know, letting their hands yeah. go. Yeah. If you have an underhook, your hand is then trapped and it's, it's yeah. not useful anymore. Mm -hmm. See, so that's a bit of wrestling knowledge that you can apply to uh, the sport of boxing, which is. Uh, something that I've also been working on a, a lot, I'd say, is my inside game and, you know, how to clinch, work. clinch and maneuver the Working person the clinch, because yep. it is, I feel like it was something that was used a lot in old school boxing. Modern day has become a, lost, a lot less contact, a lot more clean punching, but not as physical. Um, so I guess with that being said, you're going to bring the physicality to Jake on April 17th. And you are the favorite to win. You are. The I don't think I am. Win. I think I'm the betting underdog. 
All, you're, I think you're the betting underdog, but to any polls that I've seen on social media, you are the favourite to win. Nice. Um, When's your next boxing so, match? It's going to be hopefully sometime in May. I can't disclose it on here right now, but um, hopefully sometime in May. I'll, I'll get back in the ring. And so do you fight? Uh, I know you're part of the money team. Do you trade in Vegas or are you in England? So for the, my pro career so far, I've trained in Vegas, but this is going to be the first camp that I have out in the UK. But my dad taught me how to fight. So he's going to be my trainer here. Leon, who is with us, is my strength and conditioning coach, experienced within the combat world. So I feel like I'm going to have a great camp here and I can be a better fighter at home than in Vegas. Nice. Um, so so is, is, is England relatively locked down? Because I thought like you guys can't really travel, right? Yeah. Right. It's, it's, that, is, it's, that is true. It's, yeah. I think only for work purposes you can, we can, you can travel right now as it stands. But yeah, I think there were some, there were some English fighters who were fighting in um, one championship, I believe, in mixed martial arts. Who mm -hmm. I don't, they weren't able to go because of their their visas or something. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm a a resident of the um, US, so I'm okay. Oh, yeah, really? I'm a, nice. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm I'm there, so um, I should be all right. And hopefully, I can get back in the ring, make a statement, and continue my career with a bang. I'm only 23 years old, so. We got time to grow. I might look. I might look thirty, but I'm actually twenty three. <laughs> I'm not going as bald as Jake Paul is. So we <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to. Well, we're, still, we're coming to the end here. We've spoken about the fight. I appreciate you giving us the time on that. But I also want something. I want to learn something from you today. I know you don't get to where you have got to in your life without keeping some gems close to you and keeping some core values and yeah. you, know, you know stuff, stuff that, that make, make up your, your personality so what's the three main things you would say you live by that makes you the man you are you can't live without those things that that is very interesting so um hmm well i, I think that ego don't tell your ego to the outcome is a bit you know it's a big one um, that that is, is a big one. If you can, if you can do that right, and you can really think that way, you, your ability to take chances chances goes up, right? Because um, if you're always scared of what people are going to think of you, you're never going to take chances. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's a huge one. Number number two, uh, and this might actually be number one, but um, you know, you never really going to get anywhere without a really really long period of, of hard work. Um, and I think that's true in, in business athletics no matter what it is you got to work hard um then the number two so i'm actually gonna go four because we said ego outcome number two would be um being able to deal with adversity because again even if you start working hard no matter what you do you're going to come up short at some point a little bit and being able to like bounce back because some people meet that first adversity and they say shit yeah. this shit isn't for me <laughs> i'm right. done i mean that's probably what jake paul's gonna do whether it's april 17th or the <laughs> next time he goes out there when he when he gets his ass whooped mm -hmm. one time, he's probably going to say, eh, I'll just go make YouTube videos, actually. <laughs> um, it, 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 can, it, it can change everything. Adversity can change everything. Yeah. And yeah. you got to be ready to deal with that. And then, num so number, then number three would uh, be having some ingenuity to sometimes you need to come up with new solutions to problems that people don't see. And that was a big part of my wrestling career uh, when I got, and that was where I got the funky nickname is when I got older, um, I was starting start having some relatively good success, but I was kind of coming up short because again, like I said, I have really slow twitch uh, muscle mm -hmm. fibers and just, I, I, you know, I was like, okay, but I wasn't great. And so I had to really start exploring the sport deeper and finding opportunities for myself to have success. And that, that was huge for me. So those would be my three. Okay. Yeah, good. And you know, I just wanted to, I just wanted to ask you one more thing. You know, you've, you've been, you're very open and acknowledge the fact that you have slow twitch muscle fibers. And with boxing, who and especially against someone that's against Jake, who's inexperienced, he's gonna start quickly. He's gonna let his nerves make him sharp. It's gonna make him extra quick. How are you gonna fill that void between the slow twitch fibers and someone moving very sketchy and fast in front of you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I think, yeah. Well, I, I think that's it's kind of relatively the same in in all um, combat sports. Is is uh, mm -hmm. you know again balancing the slow twitch fast twitch because really. Um, there's very few activities when being completely fast twitch is beneficial, right? Maybe like a hundred meter dash. Hundred meter sprints, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know, something super. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And obviously, being super slow, um, 
is you know a marathon or something and lots of times it's about playing to your strengths and so i mean i'm sure you guys can think of a boxer and I, i'm not I, I could name some wrestlers but i'm not as knowledgeable in boxing someone who <laughs> was really good early but if you took them past the third round they they lost every time right because yeah, they yeah, yeah. understand and then you could think of some other guys who always got their ass whooped in the first three rounds and then as the fight went on they, right, they progressed they, they go, go up, they better, go up. You know? yeah and so for me, it's always about trying to play to your strengths. And that's kind of, um, you know, now after, right, I've been competing at a relatively high level in sport for 20, 20 years or so. That's kind of figuring out how to work with what I have. It's important. Yeah. Do you have any favorite current box? Um, do you have any favorite current boxers at the moment? No, my hero uh, growing up was Muhammad Ali. Um, okay. And, yeah, I would still say just not, not only for who he was as a boxer, but just who he, who he was as a person. He was a pretty amazing yeah. individual. Mm -hmm. um and just what he's he was always willing to stand up for what he believed in and i think there's very few people um in the world who are able to do that i mean if you think about ali spent three and a half years of his prime not boxing because he it was against his moral code to go to the draft and yeah, it's like yeah. he could have said yeah i'll go to the draft and you know they would have made a box few exhibitions and he, they would have let him do whatever the hell he wanted but he said this is not what i'm gonna do and he get any sacrifice ultimately i mean you think of how much money he lost it's in the prime yeah that yeah. that was golden years man yeah that golden 10 years, 12 man. fights that he missed out on probably uh mm -hmm. because he was willing to stand up for what he believed in so i think a lot of people appreciate ali and i, I always did because of that um so that would be you know he's kind of like my my life hero mm -hmm. okay. so do you watch do you currently watch boxing now do you watch boxing uh i, I would say a little bit like i'm not you okay. know i i would watch like the top boxers um, okay but not like if you quiz me on, you know, the number six ranked guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, no, of course, of course. Yeah, of, yeah, of course. course, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, this this was really good. This was a good, no, um, good yeah. interview. It was a good yeah. catch up. I'm glad everyone can say how they feel and no one get all personal about it and get all upset about it. Everyone's just chilling, enjoying themselves and having a growing conversation. So I appreciate you coming on um people if you want to see more videos like this make sure you head over to the ruin wheels channel this is basically what the videos are but it's on my main channel today so make sure you like subscribe put that on in your subscription feed ben put your socials out there for those that don't know where you are how can they find you is this my name ben askren on instagram ben askren on twitter i i really like tweeting a lot i don't really love instagram but i have been getting better at posting content uh yes. so those, those two places Excellent. Leon, you know where to find him. Much. Leon Wills 101 on everything. <laughs> Real Wills podcast. Thank you for tuning in, people. Make sure you're listening on all streaming platforms also. And it's always love. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, guys. Life is full of open wounds and open patches So at least I made a bed upon the finest mattress Pillows with feathers disclosing in my endeavours My heart bays speaking with passion stretching the letters Niggas moving Belgium so they're sitting on the fence Only do with pounds, we don't stress about the pence Same up in the US, do with dollars, not the cents Young boy or